lift up my eyes to the hills. From where does my help come? My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. He will not let your foot to be moved. He who keeps you will not slumber. Behold, he who keeps Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade on your right hand. The sun shall not strike you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all evil. He will keep your life. The Lord will keep your going out and your coming in from this time forth and forever more. I want to preach for the time that is allotted unto me with this thought in our mind. Help for the helpless. Help for the helpless. I lift up my eyes to the hills. This common refrain Psalm 121 is one that rings deep in our ear. There's something about Psalm 121 that causes us to think about how much God has been God in our lives. Every one of us under the sound of my voice, I'm sure, can attest of the feeling of helplessness. I used to hear the old preacher say all the time that if you have not got there yet, just live a little bit longer. I ain't understood what that meant, but I know now. That there are Moments where it feels as if there is no help. It's not a good feeling to feel helpless. It's not a comforting feeling to know that you don't have the power to deliver yourself from what you are in. This feeling of helplessness reminds us that we're human. God is God. Situations are situations. Circumstances are circumstances. But at the end of the day, God is God. It's easy to, to deal with deep water. When you know how to swim. But it gets hard. When you're thrown out into the deep. Without the ability. To swim. This feeling of. Helplessness. Drowning. In my situation. Drowning in my. Circumstances. Can you imagine one that is drowning? As they're crying out for help the best way that they can, but when they open up their mouth, water fills their lungs. So it becomes a gargle of a scream. The flailing of their arms, reaching out towards a lifeguard but yet there's no help this feeling of I'm sinking in my trouble sinking in my situation sinking in my trial 
as I'm flailing, asking for help, but I don't have the strength to verbalize what I need. This feeling of helplessness is the same feeling that the psalmist feels in Psalm 121. This is part of a series known of psalms, the psalms of ascents. Somebody shout ascents. It's a series of psalms of ascents beginning in Psalm 120, I believe ending at Psalm 131 or 135, one or the other. Uh, these, these psalms of ascents are psalms that was possibly sung by those who were journeying to Jerusalem. These pilgrims, if you may, are on their way to Jerusalem. And as they look up toward the hill, the psalmist asks a question, as I lift my eyes to the hills, where is my help? Oftentimes we've quoted it and read it, uh, and we said that the, heel, the help comes from the hills. But the psalmist is really asking a question. He's looking at the hill and he's asking himself, is my help on that hill? As I lift my eyes to this hill, got a question in my mind, where is my help? I have to realize that hills synonymous with strength. Heels are synonymous with peace and comfort. Heels are synonymous with strength and structure. What do you do when you're looking from where your help should come from, but there is no help? I'm going to come get you after a while. What, what, what do you do when what should be helping you is not helping? How do you deal when what you thought you was going to get some assistance from end up falling through and did not do what you thought it was going to do? How do you deal when you thought aid was coming from this entity, but yet it's been shut down, shut up, and stopped up? What do you do? When you knew that all I had to do was just get to the hill and not get my help. But when you got there, you're looking around like this psalmist and saying, where is my help? Sometimes this happens in our life when we look to individuals who play the part as if they're able to help. But when I went to you to get help, I did not get help. Instead, I got hurt. My spirit was crushed. What do you do when you have looked towards an organization and you thought this organization was going to help you through your trial? But when you got to the organization, instead of them helping you, they turned you away. As I lift up my eyes to the hills, you got to look at these pilgrims as they are journeying through. They didn't have fancy cars. They didn't have a horse-drawn carriage. They traveled for miles, miles upon miles, hours upon hours, days upon days, weeks upon weeks, months upon months. Looking for refuge at this hill called Jerusalem. But as they are walking, looking for help, tell somebody they couldn't find any help. Can you imagine? After toiling night after night, camping underneath the stars, having to deal with wolves and beasts, all throughout your journey just to get to a place where you now are worn down. 
You're weary and you're sad and you're looking for somebody to uplift you. But when you look toward the hill, you don't see any help. It's a sad day. When we as the children of God can look towards the church and can't find any help. It's a sad day when we look towards the church to help, but the church is silent. There's a world that is looking towards a hill called the ecclesia, called the church, called the called out ones of God. But when they look towards the church in some instances, they don't find any help. Hmm. When you were looking, it hurt you. So imagine how individuals feel when they look to us. But we're not in place to do what God has called us to do. You know the feeling of helplessness. Imagine how those without Christ feel when they are helpless. I lift up my eyes <laughs> to the hills. Looking for help. Looking for assistance. But as I look, I don't see any help on the hill. Instead, I see some idolatry going on on the hill. I see the worship of some false gods on the hill. I see the uplifting of man on this hill. I see a man-centered and a man-driven worship where worship is all about how God makes me feel versus what I can offer unto God. I'm looking at this heel. And I don't need a man centered gospel, but I need the gospel of Jesus Christ. And I came to his disciples, but they could not help me. <laughs> help for the helpless. As I lift up my eyes, where is my help. Only if you can be honest this morning. I'm just looking for those who can be real with me this morning. That has ever asked that question. Where is my help? Only those who can look at our situation with pure intention, with an honesty about ourselves, can ask this question, where is my help? From where does my help come? God, I need help. Where he is? My help. The psalmist, after journeying through this frontier country, after toiling night after night, after fighting off beasts and wolves and snakes and, and everything in the wild, he gets to this place of refuge and says, where's my help? Let me tell you where your help is. He said, I found help. My help comes from the Lord. Mm. Tell somebody, my help comes from the Lord. We will always be disappointed when we look for help from human beings. We will always be disappointed when we look from help, look for help outside of the person and the power and the providence of God. We will always find ourselves disappointed when we look for help in all of the wrong places. The truth of the matter is we got to learn how to look unto God for our help. 
<laughs> you have to learn to recognize that our help is coming from the Lord. <laughs> Where's my help? The psalmist says, uh, I got the answer to that. Uh, the same question uh, that God gave me, uh, he gave me the answer to. Uh, yes, where is my help? Uh, but he answered it and said uh, that my help comes from the Lord. That despite where I don't get help from, I know I can find help in the Lord. That even when I thought I would get help from this place, God is so God that he will step in and show me that I didn't need that help in the first place. All I needed was the help from the Lord. Because people will leave you. Let me say it again. People will leave you. And sometimes, Johnny, it's when you need them to mo the most when they turn their back on you. But I found a friend that sticks closer than any friend. Sticks closer than any brother. Stick closer than any sister. When mother is gone, he'll be mother. When father is gone, uh, he'll be father. Is there anybody here that knows uh, your help comes from the Lord? That, that, that despite what I'm going through, uh, I can always find help in the Lord. I don't know about you, uh, but that does something to me uh, when I look and see uh, that I don't have anybody to lean on. Uh, when I look around and see uh, that I'm standing here by myself, uh, all I got to do uh, is lean on the person of Jesus Christ. Uh, and I know that my help comes from the Lord. Tell somebody my help comes from the Lord. We used to have a plaque in our home growing up. It said, when it's hard to see in any direction. What did it say, Shelby? Try looking up. When it's hard to see in any direction. Look up. When, when I don't have help on my left, when I don't have help on my right, when there seems to be no help in front of me, and there is no help behind me, and there's no help beneath me, try looking up. The psalmist says uh, to lift up your head, O oh, ye gates, and be uh, ye lifted up, ye everlasting doors, uh, and the king of glory shall come in. Tell somebody, try looking up. My help comes from... <laughs> The Lord, keys, how can you smile while your heart is broken? Because my help is coming from the Lord. Keys, how do you still got joy when your spirit is crushed? Because my help is coming from the Lord. Keys, how can you stand tall and stand strong when your life is in calamity? Because my help is coming from the Lord. You think I'm doing this because of me? You think I'm standing tall? because of my strength the devil is a liar the only reason I look strong is because I hid myself in the one who is strong the only reason I feel strong is because I hid myself in the one who is strong and let me encourage you this morning that even when you're weak God says find strength in him that even when you don't feel like giving God praise just lift your hand and I guarantee the burden uh, will get a little bit light uh, but even uh, when you don't feel like magnifying the Lord uh, I dare you to open up your mouth uh, and just give him praise uh, and the burden will ease off just a little bit uh, is there anybody here that says keys uh, you ain't got to tell me that uh, I tried the Lord uh, for myself uh, and he stepped in uh, picked me up turned uh, me around uh, placed my feet uh, on a solid ground uh, is there anybody here that can tell 
testify and take keys. You tell them my testimony. Won't you give me the mic? For God has been good to me. He's opened up doors that's been closed in my face. He's closed doors that should have never been open. Is there anybody here that can say the Lord has been my help? When the doctor shook his head, the Lord has been my help. When my friends turned their back on me, the Lord has been my help. When I didn't have anybody to lean on, the Lord has been my help. And late in the midnight hour, I heard somebody say he'll turn it around. Tell somebody he'll turn it around. He'll turn it around. He'll turn it around. And if he don't turn your situation around, I'm a living witness. He'll turn me around so that I can see what he's doing in my life tell somebody my help comes from the Lord Hallelujah. comes from the Lord but even when I then can't find help I know my help is coming from the Lord I can lean on him he, he's a sure and solid foundation Songwriter says on Christ, the solid rock I stand. All of the ground is sinking sand. I can't stand on my intellect. I can't stand on my intelligence. I can't stand on my bank account. I can't stand on loved ones and friends. But I can always stand on Christ because he's the only one that is assured foundation my help <laughs> comes from the Lord but even after I've looked to the hills couldn't see my help the spirit of the Lord says you're looking in the wrong place my help comes from the Lord then he tells us who our helper is. He tells us where it comes from. Then he tells us who our helper is. He says he's the Lord. But unless you get confused. He's the Lord that made heaven and earth. <laughs> Not just a landlord. But he's Lord, the Lord who made heaven and earth. As a matter of fact, he's the landlord because it is he that has established the earth and set it upon the flood. The earth is the Lord's. I wish I had a Bible reading church. I said, he's the landlord. The earth is the Lord's. I said, he's the landlord. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof and Everything that dwells there in tell somebody he's the landlord. He's the one who made heaven and earth. You know this God who stood out on the brink of time and gave time a job and told time to start its time and clock in. He was in the beginning before the beginning ever began and he will be in the ending after the ending has already ended. You know this God, this God who stood out and created the heavens and the earth, who created the world in six days and on the seventh day he rested not because he was tired but because he was completed because he finished the good work that he has established and one writer said that he that hath begun a good work in you will perform it even unto the day of Jesus Christ I don't want you to miss that when he created the heavens and the earth when he saw that it was good he stopped working but one writer says that he will continue to perfect the work in you but even when the work is good he doesn't stop working in your life y'all ain't y'all missed it but even when the work in you is good the bible says he continues the work in your life let me say it again he stopped the work when he created the heaven and the earth when he saw that it was good but one writer said that 
that he that hath begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ so that good work that's on the inside of you God says I'm still working on the inside God says I'll never stop working I will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ this God this God this God this God who came down to the womb of a virgin Mary suffered under Pontius Pilate he was bruised for my iniquity he was chastised for my peace and with his stripes the Bible says I'm healed it's this God that my help comes from is there anybody here that says I know the Lord I know who you're talking about because he walks with me he talks with me and he tells me that I am his own and the joy we share as we tarry there none other shall ever know is there anybody here that can testify and say I know who this God is <laughs> my help comes from the Lord he tells us who the helper is he tells us what the helper does he says that he will not let your foot be moved he that keeps you doesn't slumber nor does he sleep you have to realize that in those times if a God could not answer prayer they would say he's sleeping you remember what happened on Mount Carmel don't you when that showdown at sundown arose, when uh, on Mount Carmel, Elijah said, let God be God. Either you're going to follow him or follow Baal. And whichever God answers by fire, let him be God. And the prophets of Baal started cutting themselves throwing themselves on the altar and their God could never answer by fire Elijah looked at him and said maybe you need to cry out just a little bit longer a little bit louder because maybe he's sleeping but my God doesn't slumber nor does he sleep uh, yes sir my God doesn't slumber nor does he sleep which means he's always watching over me he's always listening for my cry he's always listening for my petition and I made up in my mind that I'm not going to worry about my situation I'm not going to keep myself up at night trying to worry about what's going on I'm not going to lose sleep you want to know why because the Bible says that he never slumbers nor sleep so there's no use in both of us staying up I'm gonna go to sleep and let him work on it through the night I'm gonna go to sleep and let him pull the all-nighter I'm gonna go to sleep and let him do what he does in my life because the weeping that I have it may endure for the night but when I wake up in the morning joy yes sir when I wake up in the morning joy shall be my portion tell somebody go to sleep go to sleep just go to sleep he doesn't slumber he doesn't sleep God got it go to sleep put it in his hand and let God be God tell somebody joy is on its way hallelujah yes sir he doesn't slumber he doesn't sleep. He said, the Lord is your keeper. Mm. The Lord is your keeper. That when I can't keep myself, God keeps me. I used to think that I was keeping myself upright. But when life hits you, you find out that you don't got the strength to keep yourself except the Lord step in. Except the Lord builds the house. 
They that labor, labors in vain. I can't keep myself. But God is keeping me. He's your keeper. He's your keeper. Which means he's your protector. He covers you. He shelters you. He's a shield and a fortress. My God in whom I trust. A thousand shall fall at my side. Ten thousand at my right hand. But nothing shall come nigh my dwelling. He's my keeper. He's the shade. On your right hand the sun shall not strike you by day. Nor the moon by night. I got to close, but I got to deal with this. You have to realize the context in what this psalm is written in. They're in a hot desert place with sweltering heat from the sun. And so when the psalmist says that the sun shall not smite you by day, you have to realize that they're journeying on their way to Jerusalem. This psalm is a psalm of ascents. Remember, it's a psalm of ascents, which means it's sung by pilgrims as they're journeying and making their journey to Jerusalem. You can imagine the heat that they endured day after day. You can only imagine the heat that they encountered day after day. You can imagine the effects from the sun. And the psalmist says that because God is your keeper, even the sun shall not smite you by day. Which means it doesn't matter how hot it gets in your life. The sun and the heat from the sun can do no harm to you because God has conditioned your body to withstand the heat. Come here Hananiah. Come here Mishael. Come here Azariah. You call them Shadrach Meshach and Abednego. Those three Hebrew boys that as they were thrown into the fire, the same fire that took the guards that consumed the guards when they got in the flame the Bible says that they were walking around loose uh, yes sir, walking around you have to understand he did not take the heat out of the fire because if he took the heat out of the fire then the guards would not have died you understand but the guards died that he took to the furnace to the furnace but what did he do he didn't take the heat out but he conditioned their body to withstand the heat the pain in your life is real pain but God will condition your body to withstand the pain those tears that you're shedding are real tears and they're coming from a hurting place but God will condition your body to withstand what you're going through so the heartache that's in your heart is real it's not a figment of your imagination you're really going through this but don't miss it you're really going through this don't miss it you're really going through this in other words you may be in it right now but you will get through it there's joy on the other side but God will condition you while you are in it I'll be a good teacher next week. Uh, but you have to realize that even the sun, even the heat from your life situation cannot overtake you. Sun shall not smite you. Then he says, nor the moon by night. <laughs> the heat of the day <laughs> can't smite you. <laughs> I just thought about heat of the night. Heat of the day can't smite you. But he says, I'm not just going to protect you in the day. But when the sun goes down, neither the moon can disturb you. There's something important here. 
Because in ancient times, and even today we have a term, and I'll get there, that ancient times they believed, and it's true today, that the moon and the gravitational pull of the moon does something to the mind of individuals. The, the gravitational pull can cause one to be crazy, can cause one to act in a way that they should not act. If you don't believe that there's a real gravitational pull, then you've never served in a school system after a full moon. Them kids get crazy. You, 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 you've, you've never served. Uh, you've never seen kids. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. You know what I'm talking about. Y- y'all know. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They get crazy. But th- there's a gravitational pull that does something to the brain. There's a term for it. We call it lunatic. Uh, where do we get that word from? Lunar is dealing with the moon. Lunatic means you're crazy. But God says that whatever you're going through, through it's not going to take your mind because the moon shall not smite you by night either but even while you're in it God says I'm going to guard and preserve your mind Uh, yes sir you might be going through what you're going through but it will not take your mind Uh, yes sir the old saints used to wake up and say I woke up this morning with my mind stayed on Jesus Uh, yes sir they used to say something as well I woke up this morning with my right mind. Is there anybody here that can give God praise for keeping you in your right mind? Sun shall not smite you. It shall not smite you by day. The moon won't take your mind. The night won't take your mind. Truth of the matter is we start thinking a little crazy. When it gets dark in our life, late in the midnight hour, when it gets dark in our life, that's when our mind can be taken away. Late, dark in our trouble, we can lose our mind, but God says the sun ain't going to strike you and the moon will not either. For the Lord is going to keep you from all evil he's going to keep your life he's going to keep you going out and you're coming in from this time forth and forever more you see you got to realize that in those moments where we are helpless that there is help for us alone in those moments where we can't find assistance from our neighbor here and there is help for us oh lord is there anybody in this room your testimony is god has been my help Oh Lord, when I look down on the horizon and I thought I was going to find some help from my situation, but I didn't find what I thought I was going to find. But I made up in my mind to recognize that my help comes from the Lord. Yeah, Lord, late in the midnight hour, yeah, when my body is racked in pain, there is help that I found from the Lord. Oh, Lord, is there anybody in this room that can agree with me and say that my help comes from the Lord? Yeah, you see, the psalmist was looking at a hill called Jerusalem. Yeah, Lord, he said, I lifted my eyes to the hill, but where is my help? 
Yeah, yeah. Where is my help? When I looked at this hill called Jerusalem, I didn't find my help there. Yeah. When you looked at the hill called government, you couldn't find no help there. When you looked at the hills called friend, you couldn't find no help there. When you looked at the healer called brother you could not find no help there when you looked at the healer called sister you couldn't find no help when you looked at the healer called sister and brother and mother and father you couldn't find no help but I'm reminded of another heal yeah Lord I'm reminded of another heal that I can find my help and this heal yes sir called Golgotha the place of the skull they call it Calvary's mountain yeah Lord and one day on this hill on this mountain called Calvary my help they hung him high yeah Lord my help they stretched him wide my help they put nails in his hand in his feet my help on this hill they put a crown seven and two thorns upon his head you know what he did he hung his head in the lock of his shoulders after the gambles for his clothes he hung his head in the lock of his shoulder after they said he wasn't the son of God he hung his head in the lock of his shoulder after they mocked him ridiculed him called him everything but the son of God you know what he did when my help hung his head in the lock of his shoulder he died didn't die he died he died unto the moon dripped away in blood the sun refused to shine just like the psalmist said the sun shall not smite thee by day and so the sun refused to shine and the moon won't harm thee either it dripped in blood what blood there is a fountain drawn from Emmanuel's veins and sinners plunge beneath lose all their guilt and shame is there anybody here this morning can agree with me and say I looked up to a hill called Calvary and I didn't have any question about where my help was coming from but when I looked at this hill there was a man his name was Jesus do you know Jesus Mary's baby Jesus the road is sharing them Jesus my battle angst in the time of war Jesus my elbow leaning post Jesus my walking cane from earth to glory Jesus do you know do you know just in case you don't know can I tell you what he did he died didn't die but I'm so glad that that's not how the story ends don't know what time it was but they tell me that it was early early early, early. 
Elish. Can you say early? Elish. Elish. Resurrection morning He got us With power In his hand Power In his name And that same power Reaches to me That same power Comes in When I want to hold my head down That same power Gives me strength That same power Picks me up Turns me around uh, place my feet uh, on a solid ground uh, is there anybody I've encountered uh, this power it walks with me uh, he talks with me uh, tells me uh, I am his own uh, somebody uh, if you believe it uh, and you know uh, that the Lord uh, is your helper uh, open up your mouth uh, and see yeah, 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 you want to give them praise, you want to give them glory, come on, take the limits off, come on, get out of your pride, come on, lift up Jesus, with everything you got, give him glory, with everything you got, magnify him, come on, oh, oh, magnify the Lord with me, and let us, let us exalt his name together, come on, if he's been good, you want to wave your hands, if he's been good, you want to say thank you Lord, if he's been good, you want to jump up and down, if he's been good, you want to say hallelujah, Hallelujah! Yeah! Yeah! Come on! He's been good! Come on! He's been good! Come on! Come on, he's been good, 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 good. He will keep you, he will keep you. Won't he do it? Won't he do it? Won't he do it? Won't God do it? Won't he fight your battle? Won't he do it? Won't he make a way out of no way? Won't he open up a door? Won't God do it? Won't God do it? Shout yeah! 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 If you knew what it kept me from, you will understand my praise. If you knew what he sheltered me from, you would understand my praise. If you knew what he helped me from, you would understand why I scream the way I scream. Why I jump the way I jump. Why I wave my hands. I dare you just wave at him. Come on, just wave at him. Wave at him. I acknowledge you. Wave at him. I recognize. Wave at him. I see you working in my life what shall I render what shall I render unto God for his mighty works praise God in his sanctuary praise him in the firmament of his power praise him string instruments and organ praise them high sound like cymbal praise them loud sound like cymbal let everything everything that have breath open up your mouth and give him glory 
Come on, praise him with your breath. Come on, praise him with your breath. Say hallelujah. I say thank you, Lord. I gotta say thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. I gotta say thank you, Lord, for all you've done. Woo. Don't wait till the battle's over. But you got to learn how to shout through your battle. I know you're hurting right now. I know you got pain in your heart right now. I know the doctor's still shaking his head. But I'm going to say thank you, Lord. Because sooner or later, God will. God will. Ah, he will. Ah, he will. Come on, praise him in advance. Give him praise in advance. Come on, give him glory in advance. You want to praise him like it's already done. Come on, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I don't see the healer right now, but I know it's on the way. I don't see the promotion right now, but I know it's on the way. I don't see the degree right now, but I know it's on the way. I don't see the blessing right now, but I know it's on the way. Thank you, Lord. God says he's heard your cry. He's seen your petition. Every tear you sown, you shall reap in joy what you've been worrying about. God says lay it at the altar because I'm working it out. This next word is only for those that's been petitioning heaven for something. What I'm getting ready to say is for those of you that's been toiling night after night asking God for something as you've journeyed through this land just like a pilgrim in Psalm 121 looking for help. Here's your word. God says, I heard you. He says, I heard you. I heard you, I heard you, and there's nothing that can come by my ear that doesn't stop to my heart and get in my hand to bless you. God says, I heard you, and I will do. He's heard your cry.
As we stand all over this house, he's heard you. He's heard your cry. He's heard you. As we stand, if we can, he's heard you. He's heard you. Whatever you cried about, God says those tears you've sown, they're getting ready to reap in joy. He's heard you. Hallelujah. He's heard you. My, my, my. He's heard you. What man said could not be done. God says, I'm getting ready to blow your mind. What you thought was not possible. God says, I'm getting ready to show you that it was impossible. But with me, all things are possible.